Father God, right now, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Reveal who you are to us. Let your presence dwell among us. Father God, I pray now for this word that as we share this word, it shall fall on good ground, produce a harvest in the lives of the people today. God, thank you for allowing me to share, to teach. God, we bless you today. And let the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, oh God. We thank you for a life-changing word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ministry. Exodus chapter 33. I see Moses here. He's going back to have this conversation with the Lord concerning the people. He's given some instructions. These folks have been stiff-necked. And so this morning, I'm titling this based off of what I got out of the scripture and based off what I heard even in my sleep. The Lord woke me up a month or two ago, and I just heard, show me your glory. For this year, we need more of God. So Moses picks up this conversation, and, and then he's speaking with the Lord in verse 12 of Exodus 33 through 23. It says, then Moses said to the Lord, see you say to me, bring up this people, because the Lord had just gave him instructions earlier. But you have not let me know whom you will send with me, yet you have said, I know you by name. And you have also found grace in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray, if I found grace in your sight, show me your way, that I might know you that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people, God, is your people. And he said, my presence will go with you and I'll give you rest. Then he said to him, if your presence don't go with us, do not bring us up from here. Let me tell you something. Isn't that a powerful thing to say that even as we're going into 2024, we're here and we believe in God, we're birthing some new things. God, if you don't go before me, uh, don't allow me to leave this place. I don't want to move and go to a place where you are not at or your presence or your covering is not there. Verse 16, for how then will it be known that your people and I found grace in your sight except you go with us so we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. And so the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing you have spoken for you found grace in my sight and I know you by name. And Moses respond, please show me your glory. Show me your glory. So today as I, as I think about this, as I'm thinking about show me your glory, in other words, what he's declaring, Lord, I need more of you. Where I am right today in my life, God, I need more of you. What I currently have is not enough. Where you are taking me, God, I need more of you. What you have assigned and called me to do, I need more of you. If there's anybody out there need more of the Lord, God has given you some things. There's some things happening right now as we speak. You need more of him. And Moses understood that. God, you've given me this assignment. These folks here are so stiff-necked. You've done all this miraculous thing and they still, but, but I like how Moses responds. To say that Moses had some experiences with God would be an understatement. He, he, the experiences are, are breathtaking when you go through the text. The burning bush, we saw that early in the text when the Lord really began to call him and speak to him from a burning bush. We saw the plagues that come out, those ten plagues that came. We saw the splitting of the Red Sea. The ascending of Mount Sinai, the, the tent of meeting with the presence of the Lord. And yet what is most amazing to me when I think about the text, after all of these experiences, Moses still wants more. Do you still want more after God has done so much for your life already? Have you got complacent with all the blessings already? God, God has said, listen, we need to stay in that position and stay in that posture where we need more. Show me your glory. Moses wanted to see God face to face. Moses, his bold and humble request was, show me your glory. It seems the more Moses experienced God, the more he wanted him. Anybody know something about that? 
The more you spend time with God, the, the, the more you experience God in your life, the more you want more of him. This is not a typical statement for most of us. We are content with our simple, low-key relationship that we have in God. God, I'm good with you, God. I'm good. I'm straight. I'm good. You got this low-key relationship. You get some places, you know, folks don't even know you know God. Uh, we, we got this low-key kind of relationship thing. Yet Moses, though, after encountering God in such a marvelous way, longly he was wanted to see more of God's glory. Scriptures fill, man, with those who, who long to see God. David often writes stuff like, my soul breaks with longing for your judgment at all times. Isaiah said in 26 and 9, he said, uh, at night my soul longs for you. Indeed, my spirit within me seeks you diligent for when the earth experience your judgments, the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness. David is still right. Whom have I heaven but you? And besides you, I desire nothing on earth. When I think about these scriptures along with the longest that Moses have all together teaches us something very important. What's that? If you are genuinely experiencing God in your life, your appetite for his glory will increase and not decrease. That's a thought. When you are genuinely experiencing God in your life, listen, it will cause your appetite for his glory to increase and not decrease. Yeah, when you are, I'm talking about genuine, I'm not talking about playing God, I'm talking about when you are experiencing God genuinely in your life, it causes your appetite for his glory to increase, for it not, not decrease. God is so good, isn't he? That the more you experience him, the more you want him. If this is not a reality of your life today, I'm here to tell you that there is so much more, it's more for you in God. So much more for you in God. So much more. But you have to lay down the excuses that hold you back from experiencing the more of him. So we're saying, show me your glory. God, I need more of you. But, but, but I need more of you. C.S. Lewis, a great scholar, he's a theologian, and we all, those that have studied a little bit, C.S. Lewis, he made this comment. He says, but the trouble is that we call asking God's forgiveness very often really consistent asking God to accept our excuses. Where, where is he going? Because experiencing the glory of God in your life really is all about letting go all the excuses that hold you back from encountering God. Here's a, here a second thought. I just said it to you. Experiencing the glory of God in my life, in your life, is about letting go all the excuses that hold you back from encountering God. What is it that keep holding you back from encountering God? What is it that you're afraid of? What, it's interesting that when, when I was in the world and still doing worldly stuff, it seemed as if um, folks, at, you know, I wasn't really interested or people really not interested in God or the church thing because there's a, when you have a real encounter, there's a real transformation. People feel like they got to give up something. Ah, experiencing the glory in your life. It's about letting go. Let go and let God. Yeah, let go of all those excuses that hold you back. Let, let them go. So when I think about what does really experiencing God's glory mean, experiencing God's glory, but before I move any further, I think it would be helpful to just really look at that particular word and from a Hebrew perspective. The word glory comes from the Hebrew word kabod which basically means, this word means abundance. It can mean overflow. It can mean increase. It can mean weighted, right? Okay. But this abundance, when Moses is asking God, show him more of his glory, he's asking God for an abundance, an overflow of himself in Moses' life. Wow, man, you're talking about a request. Moses was not selling it for the things he had already experienced. See, we don't need to just always settle for what God has already done in our life in the past, but ready for a new encounter of abundance. Is there anybody who's ready for a new encounter? Who, who, ready, who ready for a fresh wind? Who's ready for some new wine to be placed in new wine skins? Who needs some new revelation? Who needs some new insight, new favor, new doors opening up? You, you want to experience, listen, we're talking about a new encounter. 
You remember when it's something about encountering God, man. Change God. Moses said, hey, Lord, show me your glory. I'm going to need some help here. Dealing with these folks, I need some help. Not only did Moses make a bold, humble request, the Lord promised to even give him more. Where are you going with that, Pastor? I noticed after I read the first of those verses, I went to verse 19. And, and listen what uh, the Lord said to Moses in verse 19. He says to him, then he said, I'm going to make all my goodness, oh my goodness, pass before you and I'm going to proclaim the name of the Lord before you. Let me go back. He says, I'm going to make all my goodness. In other words, I'm going to reveal my goodness to you. You haven't experienced the goodness of me just yet like, like, like I have planned for you. He says, I want to reveal this to you. And then he says, I'm going to proclaim, in, in other words, the name of the Lord. I, I'm going to reveal my name to you, Moses. I'm going to identify who I am to you. I'm going to be gracious. In other words, I'm going to reveal my sovereignty. God is sovereign. Because the reason I say that is because he says, to whom I'll be gracious and I'll have compassion on whom I'll have compassion. In other words, the Lord is saying, I can do whatever I want to do for whoever I want to do it for. I, I'm, I'm sovereign like that, but, but I want to reveal this to you, Moses. I'm going to do more. I'm going to show you my goodness. I'm going to proclaim my name to you, Moses. See, in counting the glory of God, it's all about allowing God to give you an abundance of his presence. Hallelujah. Uh, that there's something about being in God's presence. Somebody, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. When you get in his presence, things begin to happen. You, it takes you to another place, and he gives you this confidence and courage and reveals some things. Even when you're struggling, he'll say, I am God. I am God. And so that, that, that his presence, so to experience this, I think John the Baptist uh, said it best in John 3 and 30. John the Baptist says, and may he increase so that I might may decrease. So, so this tells me something. Here is a thought. The glory of God is something that you have to make room for in your life. Oh, you got to make room for him. You got to make room for the glory. Hallelujah. You, you got to make room for the glory. It, it, see, see, that's why I was a little tight early and we were giving worship and gl the glory. Listen, you got to make room. You got to get rid of those things that's hindering you from experiencing the glory. You got to make room for the glory. Moses said, show me your glory. Got to make room for it. Before Moses could encounter the burn, at the burning bush, he first had to do something, take off the sound. As a matter of fact, Exodus 3. Verse 4 and 6, this is when God began to speak to Moses. First of all, in chapter 3, I went way back 30 chapters. And I landed on verse 4 and 6. And here's what it said in verse 4. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look. Now Moses, he heard his voice coming from this, this burning bush that's really not burning, but it's burning, right? God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Oh, we can stop right there. That if we can respond like that, here I am. God, you call my name. And then verse 5 says, then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet. For the place where you stand is holy ground. I'm going to come back to that in just a second. Moreover, he said, I'm, I'm the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. He says, take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Man, why take off my sandals, Lord? Uh, why take off my sandals? He had to spiritually make room for God. Uh, uh, th th this is something, this is faith talking. Taking off his sandals was an act of faith. Uh, take your sandals off. Of what I'm getting ready to reveal to you, I need to make sure that you reverence me and understand that where you stand, Moses, this is a holy place. You got to understand where God has you and where you stand, it's a holy place. When you come into God's presence, you need to understand it's a holy place. You need to reverence who he is and you got to first believe that he is who he say he is. He said, take them off. Take off your sandals, man. This place is set apart from the norm. Why is that? Because God was present here. He says, oh, don't, don't, don't you move too fast, Moses. God is talking to us today. Don't you move too fast. 
You're talking about being blessed. You're talking about enlarging your territory. Don't you move too fast. I need you to prepare yourself. How, Lord? You need to empty yourself for my glory. There are some things in your life you need to empty. There, there are some things that are holding on to you you need to empty. You got to empty yourself and then enter into my presence. Because there's some things that you got to do. You got to empty. You got to make room. We're talking about making room. The, the glory of God is something that you have to make room for in your life. He don't force himself on us. God will let you walk clean off a cliff, man. He, he's sovereign like that. He's sovereign. But I love his mercy. I love his, I love his grace. He gave these folks multiple times uh, all the stuff that God had done for these folks. They still refuse to obey. How much more does God have to do for you for you to obey? How much, how much more? So, so I was thinking about that. This is really important to understand because one of the main reasons we do not encounter the abundance of God in our lives is because we are already filled with our own personal glory. Look at me. I get my own personal glory. I got it going on. I'm balling. I got all these followers and all. It's about my own personal glory. That's why it's so hard to encounter him. On the flip side, whatever space you create for God in your life, his glory will fill it abundantly. Whatever space you create for him. There are three key instances in the Bible where the priest literally, when I think about it, could not minister because of the abundance of the glory. We kind of experienced a little of that this morning, here just a little while. When, when the glory of the Lord is so strong and present in the place, it's hard to operate. It's hard to move forward. It's hard. It's, 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 so when I, I saw a few places, Isaiah 40 and 30, 30, 40, 34 and 35 in Isaiah, the Bible says, Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses was not able, watch this, to enter into the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. See, this was the final confirmation for Moses and the people that all the work for setting up God's dwelling place, God wanted to dwell among them and this tent of meeting was where his presence would come. And so, and so it, it was a final confirmation. Had been it, everything that he, they supposed to do was properly done, and all the instructions followed. Another time I saw in First Kings, I kept going. First Kings eight, chapter eight, verse ten, eleven says, "And it came to pass when the priest came out of the holy place, that the cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord." I want to give you a heads up. You, you have to expect this and understand this. If we ever come to this place and the glory of the Lord is so strong that I can't even preach, please understand. Please, please understand because there's sometimes that we'll get to a place where it'll be so full and so rich we won't even be able to move any farther. The cloud was the glory of the Lord. The cloud. In other words, the visible symbol of God's presence. It signaled the Lord's approval of the new temple. Yeah, so he's get, Solomon is given this opportunity, just like the tabernacle was dedicated. Now he has been given this approval to build the temple, and he's going to build it. Here's the last chance, another time I saw it, Second Chronicles chapter 7. He's already built this temple, man. Here's what verse 1 and 2 said. When Solomon had finished praying, the Bible says, fire came down from heaven. And consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices. Watch this. And the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And the priest could not enter the house of the Lord. Why? Because the glory of the Lord had filled the house. This was, a, this was the official genuine dedication because only God can truly sanctify uh, you, you, you can put some stuff, to, things together. Even me and my buddy was talking about it, reminded of uh, God's word that unless the Lord build the house, we labor in vain. And so, so God was pleased with Solomon. He said, listen, now that fire came down from heaven, in other words, a sign that I approve what you're doing. When you've been sanctified, you've been approved. Hallelujah. You've been approved. You've been approved when you're sanctified. 
You've been approved. Why? Because you've been set aside for God for a purpose. I'm talking about show me your glory. In other words, all we're saying today is, Lord, I need more of you. Were you taking me, God? What I had last year is not enough for this year. I need more of you, God. I need more insight. I need more revelation. I need more power. I need more of you. You telling me now, you telling me to get up and take these folks into the promised land. God, I guarantee you these folks are going to cut up again. And they cut up so bad, they frustrated Moses. When Moses is supposed to speak to a rock, he smited the rock. And he was punished. He was punished because he was disobedient. He allowed the people. We got to be very careful in 2024 to allow folks to get us out of character. We got to be very careful. You either going to stand for God or you're going to be on the other side. We got to stop letting people take us out of character. Moses got frustrated with these folk. Boy, I almost said the N word, but I got frustrated with these folks. The reality is you cannot allow people to get you out of character. Get you out of character. You got to get you out of character, man. You got to stay in line, Moses. He, listen, Lord, I need more. So I understand Moses today. I'm a pastor, and I understand it. I don't want to ever get in a place because I experienced success year one, success year two and year three and year four and year five and year six and seven and eight, and now I'm at year nine. I need more of him for year 10. I need more of him for the next year and the next year and the next year. As long as I'm standing in this office as a pastor, I'll always need more of him. And even when I come out of this office, I still need more of God. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Come on, work with me. Work with me. Work with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need more of him. Show me your glory. I get it now. Show me your glory. And what he was saying, Lord, I need more of you. These folks will make me choke them or something. They, I need more of you. I get it. I get it. I need more of him. I need more of him. Hallelujah. I need more of him. I'm almost there. I'm, hallelujah. Need more of him. So, 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 Pastor, the question will always be, man, so how, how do I encounter this glory? God's glory. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a great question. And my last thought to you today is I'm just kind of walk this out how to encounter God's glory. I'm going to tell you whatever you empty, God will fill it with his glory. Whatever you empty, whatever you empty, what, what are you willing to, to empty? So you can't make room for something new until you make some space. You can walk into a thing and when it's so full, I, I can't get nothing else in there. I got to give away some stuff. I got to throw some stuff away. I got to move some stuff. So what God is saying, whatever you're willing to empty, I feel it. Whatever you empty, no matter if it's a temple made of stone or a temple in the heart, in your heart, God will fill it with his glory. Man, that, that, that's the next, that next question should be, how do you empty yourself so that the abundance of God may come in and, and fill it? Let's look to Moses again. Let's see if Moses helps us. Exodus 33, I'm going back to 33. 18 and 19, same text. Please show me your glory, he says. Then he said, I'm going to make all my goodness pass before you, and I'm going to proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. I'm going to have compassion on whom I will have compassion. It seems to me that God was asking Moses, in a paraphrase, you want to encounter my glory? Then proclaim my name. Proclaim my name out of your mouth. Declare who I am to everybody. Proclaim my name. Say, I'm going to proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I, I need you to do this, Moses. You want to experience more of my glory? When we begin to magnify the name of God, things begin to change in our life. The moment I made the Lord a priority, the moment I began to make seeking his face and spending time with God, he began to tear some stuff off of me. Let me go to a lust spirit real quick. Uh, pastor, love to be transparent. I 
was talking with my barber, who's a powerful man of God, a minister of the gospel as well. I remember when the lust spirit broke off of me. I remember. I remember. I was praying in the 90s. Fell out prostrate in 97 on the floor praying. And God said, you built some altars on your heart to a lot of stuff. But I still wasn't sure was I delivered from lusting for all the things that we lust for. Yeah, I, I still. So, so I remember going, getting deployed with the military in 2002, and I left my wife and children, but specifically my wife. I ain't dealing with the children right now. I left my wife for six months. I was in Europe, a place called Hungary. Tazar hungry, Budapest hungry. They call it Paris of the East. Anytime you are in Europe, it's a lot of fun that happens in Europe. For me, to not to cross that line and entertain the temptations of the devil and mess around with a woman or anything like that, when I finished that six-month deployment and I left there and God sustained me, the spirit of the living God, kept me and when I got back home to the states it was like I was I've sensed God said now I know that I've been delivered that I've been set free and it all came about because I would get in his presence and I would pursue and seek after God that God's favor found me in hungry the favor was so strong that the chaplain would come on the base from Germany and he said to me one day, he says, uh, Lieutenant Edwards, I won't be here on the, on the base for two Sundays out of the month. He says, but I, I want you to lead the service two Sundays out the month on this campus. You mean, Lord, you want me to do that? All I'm saying, y'all, when you had a real encounter, a real one, things are changed in your life. You struggling with something, you ought to press in a little deeper. You can't break something off of your life, you ought to press in a little deeper. You ought to seek his face at times when not everybody is seeking his face. In 2024, seeking his face is not popular. You better seek his face. God will break some stuff off of you. There are some things that will change in your life. What is the manifested name of, G of God, Jesus Christ? It is. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the holy begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, Jesus Christ. Hebrews 1 and 3 says, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Who are we talking about, y'all? And upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins. Listen what Jesus did for us. The Bible says, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. We have an advocate with the Father today, right now. Sitting to the right hand of God. I'm so grateful that even when you step out of line, your advocate with the Father steps in for you. When the enemy is throwing his lies at you and his attacks at your life, Jesus steps in and looks to God and says, Objection, Father God. Or she going to get her life together. He going to get his life together. He's not going to go down like that. The enemy is a liar. I'm so grateful that we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to me to the Father except through me. Man, the Lord cannot, I'm almost there, the Lord cannot feel what has not first been emptied. When we come to a place in our hearts and say, Jesus, I need more of you. Matter of fact, say that after me. Jesus, I need more of you. I, I wanted you to say that because some of us are going to leave this place and still won't say it. See, we got to speak faith. We got to speak faith. We need more of him. The measure I have just, it just the, what I have is not enough. I need to overflow the abundance of your glory. 
Only then do things begin to change. See, he'll allow you to, you know, you know the enemy, he'll allow you to just go to church, check the block. I want to I applaud a lot of you, man. We've been having a lot of people online for Bible study. A lot of people, it's like 60-some folks this past Wednesday. It's just good, y'all, just real good. Especially when you're asking, like, Lord, I need more of you. How can you say, I need more of you, and you won't take the time to even study his word? together with other believers to fellowship. I, I know this is getting strong. I got it. But as your pastor, I didn't sign up to be your buddy. I didn't sign up to always say all the good stuff that you want to hear. The Bible said there's going to be a lot of people looking for ministries for their itching ears. They want to hear what they want to hear, but I'm going to tell you the truth. You need the Word of God. You need the Word of God. Stop all this plan. You need the Word of God. We on Bible study for one hour. But you'll spend two, three, four weeks on a series on Netflix. Somebody say, I, I'm TV binging. Binging? You need to learn how to binge on the written word of God. And I guarantee you it'll change your life. I'm going to leave that alone. I know y'all about to throw I know y'all ready to go now. But, but we need to bend some time on God. Just, just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Bend on him. When speaking of the abundance, he said, I mean, Moses said in, in, in verse 20, I can't see. He said, the Lord said, but you cannot see my face for no one may see me and live. But that didn't stop Moses from the encounter. It didn't stop him. Moses did not see God's glory didn't matter because he felt like, listen, it's already death. I don't see it. It's powerful because we cannot allow anything to keep us from encountering God's glory. Yeah, we can't, we can't allow nothing to stop us. All we have to do is get rid of the dead weight that keeps us from encountering the abundant measure of God's glory. Get rid of the dead weight. You got some people in your life, you've been, they've been, you've been, they at the hip. But God said, evaluate that relationship. And if it's not elevating where you're supposed to be, cut it off. Yeah, you, if you just evaluate it. And listen, there, there were some things that attack. He said, listen, we got to get rid of some dead weights that keeps us from encountering God. Oh, but I love him, though, Pat. That's my boo. That's my boo. If he want to be your boo like that, let him put a ring on it. Stop all this playing around. It's encountering you from experiencing the glory. Empty yourself of the dead weight and watch the glory of God transform your life. Hallelujah. Last scripture. Paul mentions this transformation. 2 Corinthians 3 and 18. This is what he said. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, watch this, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Somebody say glory to glory. Just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Listen, the more you encounter and, and spend time with Him, we all should be going from glory to glory to glory. We should be transforming from glory to glory. That's what He's saying. There should be a transformation. Moses said, Lord, show me your glory. Are you ready to do that today? It's a question for you. For those that are online, are you ready to do that today? Declare, Lord, show me your glory. Drop the dead weight and allow the abundance of God to transform your life. Hallelujah. Come on, let's celebrate God right there. Hallelujah. Listen, while every saint is praying, let me get everybody to, to, to just hold off on your moving. This is a very important part of the sanctuary. We don't want a whole lot of moving right now. This is sacred. This is serious. There's somebody against the rope. There's somebody on, on life support of the world. The world is trying to take you out. And God is supplying a lifeline today. While every saint is in this room praying right now, 
we reaching out to those who might not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Man, I'm going to tell you, to receive Christ in this life, it'll change your life forever. It'll impact you in this life and the life to come. God has a wonderful plan for your life. And if you in this life without Jesus, you'll spend eternity in a place called a lake of fire. But guess what? That's not God's plan for your life. The lake of fire, that place was created for Satan and his demons. It's God's plan for your life that you spend eternity with him. With him. You spend eternity with him. So I want to ask you without a shadow of a doubt, if you know that you're not saved, but you want to be saved, you, you think you're saved, but you're not sure, I'm talking to you this morning. I'm not asking you to join this church. I'm not asking you to treat everybody right. I'm not asking you to stop doing toxic behavior. I'm asking you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if you're not sure that you're saved, I want you to respond to this. I'm not going to ask you to stand up or come up here and say anything. All I want you to do is lift your hand and put it back down. If you're here today while saints are praying and you want to be saved, you want to be born again, you want to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you want to be sure, all I want you to do is lift your hand and put it back down. Anybody want to receive Christ, you can put your hand down. You can put your hand down. Anybody want to receive, you can put your hand down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see your hand. You can put your hand down. My hands are still. Let me ask another thing. Maybe you want to recommit your life to Christ, rededicate your life to Christ. Yeah, you was once in a certain place, but somehow you got off track. Just kind of got, you know, you got out of your lane. You just got off track, right? But today, you, you, you God spoke to your heart. So, Pastor, I, 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 want, I want to experience more of his glory, more of him. If you want to recommit your life to Christ, rededicate your life to Christ, all I want you to do is lift your hand and put it back down. Anybody want to rededicate their life? Put your hand. I see 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 your hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those that have lifted their hands to receive Christ for the first time as their Lord and Savior, please repeat after me. Say, Dear God, forgive me for my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and he died on the cross for me so I can be right with you, God. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. And I thank you today, God, for saving me. Listen, if you said that prayer, you went from darkness to light just like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For all those that wanted to rededicate their life, recommit their life to Christ, repeat after me, please. Say, Dear Lord, you said in your word, if I confess my sins, that you're faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord, for restoring me, for renewing me, for receiving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate, y'all. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow. Show me your glory. Great word from God, man. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, listen, I'm not going to keep you much longer. To all our guests that showed up, those online, all our guests, thank you for pressing out. We are here every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We'd love for you to come back and hang out with us. I'm going to stand down here and shake your hand and talk to you if you want to talk to me. Amen. And we're so thankful.